All right, gentlemen, let's move to Kano State. Uh, Kano State is reputed as the commercial nerve center of northern Nigeria, hence projects to aid movements of goods and services must be enhanced. The administration of Governor Abdullahi Gandhije is focused on this with implementation of various transportation reforms. In this journalist hangout weekend special, Babajide Koladi Otitoju was in Kano to examine how the state government is ramping up construction of bridges underpasses and interchanges to ease flow of traffic. Let's share the story with you. Every city has its own identity, its main distinguishing feature or character. Kano City is a city of many firsts. It has over the years been described as Tumbingiwa, meaning belly of the elephant. The African elephant is the largest land animal. At adulthood, it stands at between 10 to 13 feet tall and weighs up to 6,000 kilograms. It can then be imagined just how big his belly will be. Kano is the metaphorical belly of the elephant, a home to all, and because of its rapid growth over the years, Traffic management has become a big challenge. The immediate past administration in Kano State prioritized construction of good road network and bridges. But the Abdullah Ganduji administration has taken the construction of flyover bridges more seriously. At the last count, Governor Ganduji had supervised the construction of seven flyover bridges in metropolitan Kano beginning with Al Hassan Danteta flyover bridge, the longest in northern Nigeria at three kilometers long, connecting two major markets in Fege and Sabongeri. One of its wings connects to the legendary Canton Quarry Market, Madobi Panshekara underpass bridge, Dengi Interchange flyover and underpass bridge, Tijani Hashim underpass bridge, Sheikh Nasiru Kabara bridge, Kofa Mata Ibrahim Taiwo Road Bridge, which connects Canton Kori and Singa Market, as well as the Muhammadu Buhari end of discussion rotary interchange in Hotoro Kano. Nogandujay says engineers and designers visited 13 world capitals before arriving at the design of the Hotoro interchange, noting that given its design, traffic control men are not needed at the Muhammad Buhari interchange. We call end of discussion as far as interchange is concerned in Africa. We name you after Muhammad, Muhammad Buhari. He will soon come and commission it in September. We commissioned engineers who visited 13 world capitals to study their interchanges and provide a proposal. It throws more light on why his administration prioritized the bridges and underpasses. We employed a consultant to find out those areas where there is very serious holdup, depending on the population distribution of the city. We identified over 20 serious areas and then we had to lay a foundation. Governor Ganduja said the Sheikh Nasiru Kabara Bridge has eliminated traffic gridlock in an area where one of the biggest hospitals in Africa is located. Another interchange is the Murtala Muhammad Hospital, which now we call Sheikh Karibullah uh, Flyover. That flyover is because of the Emma's Palace, the Kurmi Market, the Rimi Market, and the biggest hospital in West Africa. That is Murtala Muhammad Sufficialist Hospital. And across the road, there is the accident and emergency unit of that hospital. So we decided to provide a design of 
flyover, underpass, and the tunnel. It's the same location. It's the, same location. the tunnel is to allow the doctors or the nurses convey patients. To the Kano State Commissioner for Works and Infrastructure Development, Engineer Idris Wadasale, the hardship people go through on the roads in a commercial nerve center like Kano that plays host to international business people from Central African Republic, Niger Republic, Cameroon, and many other countries made these bridges inevitable. As you can, I believe we have seen the projects uh, completed. Those are completed, the only one that small that are to be completed. Yes. They emanated from not, ju not just for beautification only, mm -hmm. but if it, it emanated only from uh, the, the type of traffic in Kano. Yes. He vowed that as the administration continues to build bridges, it will not neglect inner city roads, begging for attention. We are following all this uh, construction step by step. Uh, we have already at hand now, we have some places that uh, design have been completed. The iconic 10 billion Naira Muhammadu Buhari interchange, located at NNPC Mega Station Rotary Intersection, Otoro, along Maiduguri Road in the Kano Metropolis, is dubbed the first of its kind in West Africa. Like other bridge projects in the Kano metropolis, the bridge, which is due for completion in September, is designed to address increasing traffic congestion in the area, as well as boost commercial activities. To get more facts on the Kano bridges constructed by the current administration of Abdullah Ganduje, I visited engineer Milad El Hello the Northern Area Manager of Triactor Nigeria Limited, the construction company responsible for the construction of most Kano modern bridges, underpasses, and intersections. I have prepared my uh, local storage, all concrete uh, equipment, material, woods, plywoods, other. I have more like 10 of containers there. Right inside his office, Engineer Millard has a big screen through which he monitors what's going on at the site of his current baby, the Muhammad Buhari interchange. So here you can see all my people live, how they are doing the construction. You see the towers here. Two towers are completed, this is the last level. Now we have the two other towers also to be uh, to come out soon. TVC News crew accompanied him to the site where he provided some details on the bridge, explaining why it is so special. Actually, Kano government, or Kano, the executive governor of Kano state has called it out of discussion project. So uh, out of discussion because it is one of its kind actually in the world, not only in African uh, continent. Here in Otoro, the people are grateful for the efforts being made by Governor Ganduje to ease their pains. We have nothing to say to the government, but thank you. The new bridge will indeed ease our pains. Before, it is always difficult passing through, even with a sick person. We are optimistic that the issue of traffic jam will be reduced when the bridge is completed. Behind me is the Dangi Interchange here in Kano Municipal Local Government of Kano State, Nigeria. One of the many interventions that the Kano State Government has come up with to address the problem of perennial traffic gridlock in this commercial city. Kano has been recording significant increase in vehicular traffic. Therefore, it has become increasingly necessary 
to redesign and improve existing road networks to support additional volumes of generated traffic and allow for safer and more efficient vehicular movement. Governor Ganduje threw more light on the new Kano Master Plan, the Bus Rapid System BRT, and the Light Rail Project, all geared towards improving transportation in the state. First of all, you know, Kano is a growing city because of the relative peace and stability we have in the state. The first bridge initiated and completed by the Ganduji administration is the Panshekara Madubi underpass. It is magnificent in its aesthetic beauty with marble walls on both sides. A beautiful, interesting um, development there in Kano. Biko, you've mm -hmm. been to Kano. You saw the flyovers, the underpasses, yes. and the interchanges. What would you say is that was a driving uh, force behind these constructions? I think uh, first and foremost, um, we have to look at the man who is the governor. Governor Ganduje is the longest-serving works commissioner in the history of Kano State. It was a works commissioner for six years, serving different uh, administrations. So the, the entire map of Kano is on his head, it's in his head. He knows where attention is needed to decongest traffic. There are areas where for three hours you could be stuck in traffic. And those are the areas that they've specifically designed bridges interchanges and underpasses for. If, if we had the privilege to look at the mm. um, uh, Madobi and Shikara um, interchange and underpass, you see how beautiful it is with vehicles. It's just like the fingers of the octopus. Vehicles go in different directions. No policeman um, um, directing traffic. Everyone just going in different directions. It, the design is such that you don't even need to put traffic wardens on ground because there are different fingers. So people just go in different directions. You see that even the walls were made of expensive marble, marbles. The marble tiles. So I'm like, and unfortunately, our uh, people have begun to damage some of maybe they're stealing some of those marble tiles and all that. Unfortunately, they are beginning to damage them and defacing some of those walls with uh, posters. Uh, posters mm -hmm. of politicians. But you cannot take that away from the governor that is, um, is focused on addressing traffic gridlock. And by the time Kano begins its own um, bus rapid system, they've already bought those buses. They are marking the routes now. By the time Kano begins his bus rapid system um, uh, transit that Lagos is already used to, a lot will improve and the, the state will be even more beautiful. People who can get to their destinations. Because Kano is just like Lagos in many ways. Both are major commercial centers, you know. One is the uh, major commercial center in the southern Nigeria. In Nigeria, Kano is this commercial capital of northern Nigeria, and a lot of business people come from as far as Central African Republic. So you need a transportation system that works, and the government is already delivering that. I just hope that by the time Governor Ganduje leaves office, that these things will be sustained. For someone who lived in Kano for a uh, number of years, going back to Kano and seeing beautiful things like this makes me really happy. Mm. You know, that can imagine. Uh, these things uh, <laughs> are happening in my time. All right, Mayor, I, I saw how impressed you were while we saw yes, that report. Yes, yes, um, let, me, let me say I'm very impressed. Yeah. I'm very impressed because, like you said, um, Kano is the commercial capital of the north, and it's a very historic city that have always been involved in commerce all over Africa, down the trans Sahara trade routes. And when you have a mega city anywhere in the world, one of the 
problems we are going to have has to do with traffic. If you look at Lagos, for example, traffic is a major problem in Lagos. Um, sometimes you can be in traffic for two, three, four hours. So when you see a governor who is forward-looking and able to directly attack the problem of um, traffic in the city, it's something that is very, very commendable. Not only that, the strategy that they've used is something that impressed me because in listening to the governor, he said the first thing they did was to identify the trouble spots mm. within the city where traffic used to build up. And then they now send people to go and learn how they can put things in place, whether, whether bypass or interchange or flyovers, that will serve a specific purpose in that particular place. And there is a particular interjection where I saw, and the first question when we were looking at it was the question I asked, that, is this canoe? Mm. Because um, the quality of work done is very good. I'm really impressed. The, um, yes, I've been to Kano a couple of times, but I, I've not, I didn't know that Kano is this. Is, is, they've, yeah, done, they've done this. Because, you see, when you have this quantum of, of bridges and in, in, interchange, you, mm. it, it, puts a, it shows a lot of work, but most importantly, a forward-looking governor. Be okay, I'm not surprised because I was, we had just mm -hmm. learned that, okay, it was Commissioner for Works for a lot of years. But it's important that there's somebody who knows how to tackle the problem. Because, like I said, in every mega city, traffic is a major problem. And when, you, when, you, when people spend hours inside traffic holder, it's an economic loss for that city. Because the time that they're supposed to have done, got involved in productive uh, ventures, they will, they will be rolled up in one traffic and all that. So I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. I, I hope that the governor will be able to execute other things that he wants to do. Mm -hmm. Because a city like Kano also needs a rapid broad, um, bus system. All right. And like to... uh, Mayor, let me say a bit with you. Now, we know one of the problems hampering developments, especially in Nigeria, is poor maintenance. How does the government make sure that this, the state can adequately ensure maintenance of, that's of my the conditions like this? My problem, yes, that's my problem. Because, you see, government in Nigeria will not be able to do that because of the attitude of our people. You know, we have this very bad attitude to government properties. Mm. And people don't really already care. Heard already saying, now, some you see, already something that has just been built, mm. Mm. you know, I'm sure that the designers of that project must have a reason for them to put marble in those places. I'm sure it's supposed to serve a particular purpose. purpose. But there are some characters now that have gone there to start damaging what has just been done. Mm -hmm. You will see somebody, I will go there and put posters. You know, even when there is a, <laughs> when there is a, when there is a bill, when there is a notice that there should not be a bill posted in that place. So people will still go ahead and do that. We have this, that. But what I would advise government to do is that within the Ministry of Works, there should be a Department of Maintenance mm. that will have their own budget, that will go around and make sure that, because part of the, for example, when you have rules, when you have rules, one of the problems that we have is that because we don't have adequate supervision, we allow that road to degenerate to the point that will affect it to cause traffic buildup. So, for example, when you look at um, um, the Lekki Corridor up towards Ekpe, mm. the last time I went for Gwengadi Inkas event in Ekpe, when I was coming back, I spent seven hours mm. from Ekpe to Ikeja. Seven mm -hmm. hours. That's a lot. <laughs> and I realized that the problem basically is that along that route, there are about five, six spots that the roads are completely bad. So it takes a lot of effort for the, mm. for the for the for, for cars to be able to maneuver the gullies that are there. So cars have to slow down, and then there will be build up. You spend maybe one hour trying to navigate that. By the time you go out and you move again, you meet another one in front. So it is important that in the Ministry of Works there should be a department that will, that will be for maintenance who will go around and make sure that when there are problems initially, when it's still easy for them to patch it up. They'll be able to do it because it, it won't make any sense to spend a lot of money and efforts to put this thing in place, and maybe six years down the line, mm -hmm. seven years down the line, it, the thing is, the, the thing is generated. All right, Bikeo. Now, as a commercial center of the north, what other reforms are required to make Kano a more commercially viable city? Yes, I I think Kano will be more commercially viable when. Um, the government is able to attract more investment uh, into the state. They are, they are taking many steps. For example, 
they now have their own version of Lasma. They call them Karota. They are even mm. more aggressive than Lasma. Yeah, so <laughs> all of those um, demonstrations of indiscipline on the road, on the highways, they don't tolerate it in Kano. That's one. But they need to improve on um, freshening up of infrastructure. For example, where the roads are bad. In Sabongeri, for example, uh, Sabongeri is the where you call the peak of business in, 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 in Kano. Kano State. And all around it, there are bad roads. They need to fix that whole area so that they can generate even more money. Mm -hmm. Ventures that can um, cause the states to make more money, they have to place greater accent on that, ensure that there is access to their big markets, and then even they, uh, they need to work hard on tourism. I think uh, the government needs to do a lot more on tourism. Kano is the first state where I have seen a governor sit inside his office and what's going on in the forest in the state. He can see from a big screen. You know, they've done a lot in terms of CCTV coverage of even Sabongeri. I was, uh, I, I was in his office. I saw him looking at what was going on in Igbo Road, France Road, and so right inside his office. So if you commit a crime, they can catch you. Mm. You know, forests far away on the way to Joss, they already have it covered with a security camera. So, and once there is a, a motorbike going, it triggers an alarm because they know that these tourists use motorbikes a lot. You know? Mm. So from his office, you can see Everything. what's going on. So that way, the state they, they is more secure because they are monitoring what's going on. And more and more people will be coming into Kano. Right now, people from some state of the northeast, some state of the northwest uh, where uh, they don't have peace, they are coming to settle down in Kano. They are building houses in Kano. And Kano is expanding seriously because it is also, it's in my view, even the safest state in northern Nigeria. You hardly hear of kidnapping and all that in Kano. It hardly happens. So people are coming to settle down in Kano. They must make the state more conducive for business people and other people who like to visit um, to come and do business in Kano. All right, Mayor, like your last take on this before we go. Um, the, the Ministry of Kano's economy is commerce. Mm. So it's important for them to make sure that there's access to markets and there must be ease of doing business. So the, and then they should turn Kano into a market hub for northern Nigeria. Mm. You understand? Because before, in those days, Kano used to be the hub for the trans-Saharan trade. Everybody from North Africa, there's a route to Kano. So they should reenact that, that people will be able to use Kano as the hub for business that will transmit to other parts of northern Nigeria. All right. Uh, I guess we can end on this high note. Thank you, Vicky. Well, thank you, Thanks. Mayor, for your perspectives and insights and all of our discussions today. All right. That's all on Journalist Hangout on Sunday. Join us tomorrow for the regular episode of the program at 5 p.m. You can watch the repeat broadcast of this episode tonight at 11.30. We are on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash TVC News Nigeria. I am Olajuwon Jolatanji. Bye for now and God bless Nigeria.